Welcome. My name is Chuck Gordon, and I'm telling you something about the Three Futures Holodeck musical. I want to cover three topics. The first is uh, it's some kind of personal story how to wake the superhero inside you. The second is how to help mankind qualify for the 27th century. And the third thing is how to do this with Blender and have fun with it. First, it was 2006 when I looked back to my career, which uh, went back to 1990, and I said, okay, it was a good time. I had a good career in IT consulting, leading 25 consultants, but is this all I want from my life? Is this all what I'm here for on this planet? And what do I do with the next 20 years? And just recently I uh, found a quote from Robert Zubrin, president of the Mars Society. He said, I am not going to accept myself doing less than what I have dreamed of doing when I was a boy. And this is pretty much how I felt, so I decided, yes, it's, uh, it was scary, but I decided, okay, I will go for this quest. And it was lots of work, four years, and then I took a professional coach, and with her, on one day, with lots of preparation, I found my destiny, which was it's technology and mythology. And I said, yes, this is it, that's great. But what am I going to do with that? Who wants that? Except me. And over the next few years, I developed a way to achieve that. And um, maybe some of you remember this film. It seems that I've been living two lives. One life, I'm an IT consultant for a respectable software company. I have a social security number, pay my taxes, and I am sent by my wife to carry out the garbage. The other life is lived in my Gordon cave, where I go by the name Chuck Ian Gordon, trying to save the world with Blender. I hope this life has a future, and I invite you to join the League of Superheroes. <laughs>
Um, and then, the third image, I started using Puffray. I made a nice walk cycle for this night and some other stuffs. And you can do amazing things with Puffray. For example, the next one is a, a telescope. I built a telescope in Puffray. And you see through the lens of the telescope uh, pointing to other telescopes. So it was great. And I do this up until now for some business presentation down there, the technology monster. So I said, OK, that's so much fun. I want to shift my professional career. And I want to create my own specialized animation studio. Specialized because when you do, every, uh, do things everybody else does, uh, you can't compete with uh, cheap countries. So it has to be something special. Now, uh, and this also took me some years. Um, I developed a thesis how to help mankind qualify for the 22nd century, which is we need to cultivate wisdom and chivalry, so it means knightly behavior, to enter a 22nd century which is worth living. I think mankind will survive, but the question is, do I want to live in the 22nd century if we don't do this? Now, my approach to science fiction and to 3D computer graphics. First, I founded a publishing business. I wrote my first novel, Game Worlds, which is available. Can, you can buy it, and um, it, um, yeah, I organized the, the printing, I planned the sequel, which is called Three Futures, and I had an English, English translation with a professional translator, you can't do this uh, all your own, and I'll start with Three Futures this year. Then, 2012 computer graphics, I visited Amsterdam, the UNITE, uh, the Unity 3D uh, conference, it was great. And I saw the movie The Butterfly Effect. Who has seen that? It is great. It is uh, some, some Hollywood class uh, animation, short, uh, short animation movie, but it was rendered in real time. And when I saw that and say, okay, for $10,000 you can have hardware, you can do this, I said, it's possible to do the thing I try to do. And then um, last year I had the great luck to visit an animation masterclass with Michael Markowitz from Pixar. And I was such a noob, but uh, it helped me get into that. And I started doing this holodeck musical. When I, the term, when, when I explained to my wife what I was doing, she said, oh, so you are doing a musical for the holodeck? And I said, yeah, that's it. That is what everybody understands. So. Um, I had a technical demo at the um, World Science Fiction Convention in London, which I have here. I invite you later to see it. And now I'm at the Blender conference. I've made some more uh, stuff I will show you later. And um, 2015 I will begin to produce this Three Futures trailer, which will be one song uh, with great music, great dance, and all um, you will see later in the musical. And after that, um, I will start the complete thing. And we shall see what support I can get on the way. Uh, probably I will do it song by song. Now, about Three Futures, what is it? The story, it's an attempt to save mankind with chivalry and wisdom. Surprise. It is a story about utopia versus dystopia over the next thousand years. And I was inspired by some things. Uh, who knows Legion of Extraordinary Dancers? It's a, uh, it's a web um, street dance series. You can find it on YouTube. It's really great and it really amazed me and I said, okay, I would like to include this in, in, my, in my work. Uh, I'm inspired by musicals from Tim Burton. I love the 1970s animes of Captain Future this style I like, and who has seen Kick-Ass, the comic scene of the first Kick-Ass. This is where uh, you have a comic uh, and it's in 3D and uh, it's rotated and I said, yeah, this is what I want to look my stuff. So I decided I will create a enterable comic, an enterable cartoon with um, dance like you go to a theater and you, are, you have an experience like the whole deck, you're all in there. It's a bit of work because I have to create two alien races. Those are their planets. I have um, 
of course, to create their architecture. I have to create two human architectures, which is one is some kind of neo art deco and one is some kind of dark tech gothic. And um, no, oh, okay. Of course, I did not do this alone. I had a little help. Um, I've very great artwork from Verity Glass from the UK. She uh, draws comics also for um, Doctor, help me, Doctor Who? Yeah. And um, I had help with the unit report because I didn't have time uh, to do this all myself, uh, cover art and all that stuff. Um, those mentioned there, I can really can recommend uh, if you have work for them, choreography, etc. You can go there. So I pressed the button. Okay. Yeah. Now, how to do this with Blender and have fun? It's demo time. Um, I will show you a movie now, and I invite one of you to come here and to have a look, and then we will reflect this afterwards. Who would like? Yeah. So, okay, I think it's set up. Just a moment. Yep. Okay, so the lady is there. You just put it on and you can adjust the lenses forward, backwards, in and out, but don't turn it, please. Meanwhile, I am looking for the movie. What is that? What is what? The thing he has on his face. Uh, it's a Durovis dive, the pure man's Oculus, uh, which just takes your ordinary phone, uh, and I have a Unity port of the stuff I made with Blender, uh, and it just puts the camera in, a stereo camera, and you can freely loop around, but you can't walk. People started walking around with this <laughs> without seeing anything, running into other people. This wasn't good. So, where is it? Uh, yeah, okay, I hope this works now. Do we see, yo. Okay, this is about what he sees. What you see is a bit better because um, in there you just have the static scene and the lady dancing, but I did some, some when I said I, I make a whole deck, I wanted to have this effect. And this observatory is a real place uh, in Chile. I think Yuri Beletsky made this great image. And you can, you can look up, there are stars. Okay, so this is what I had for the demo in London. You may, you may stay there if you want. <laughs> um, so, thank you. So, that's number 15, zack. And by the way, this, this beautiful lady, um, allowed me to photograph her, and it's also done with a, a I'll show you later, it's, it's also a 3D stereo scan. Now, um, my first thoughts were, hey, all this stuff is getting so cheap, so you can just 3D scan, mocap, press the render button, and you are a Hollywood producer. No, of course not. Uh, I was aware that this was quite naive, but you have to start naively to get to your goal someday. Uh, so I, did, I conducted a lot of mocap experiments and 3D scan experiments and tried to evolve a production pipeline. This is also my golden cave, which is in my basement. Um, I had to, to move there. And um, I have, this is my, my 3D scan studio. Um, I have there a Microsoft Kinect, uh, I, I don't know how to pronounce, Asus Ixtion uh, Pro Live. Uh, this little thing, there's a Fuji Real 3D stereo camera, which takes uh, stereo photos. And important, uh, the chair and the, um, the plate, you can put it on, uh, and then you can turn a person around and use Fabletech 3D scanner uh, to make a 3D scan, which is quite good because uh, you don't need to post-process. It, it quite produces very good results. Um, interesting, you just can use a smartphone um, when it has an app with a depth field um, uh, photography. 
uh, which is the um, uh, other Google Nexus, which has it. And then you can go to this webpage, devd.me, upload your picture, and it will extract a uh, depth field, which you can use in Blender to create a 3D model. So you got the picture, and you got the depth field, and you can use a... Uh, what is it, mesh deform? No, it's a um, displacement modifier, I think, and uh, you can produce funny results with it. So, but my favorite right now, um, yeah, I, I saw this uh, 3D scan uh, iPad camera from Sketch, Sketchfab tab, uh, Sketchfab guy, uh, which were really good. Um, my favorite right now is to use the um, Fuji Real 3D, which just makes a STRFP of photos, and then I use uh, Agisoft, it's a Russian company, uh, a commercial version Photoscan, but they have a free version, I think it's called StereoScan, and um, you can produce those same results with the free version. Uh, it's quite accurate, I think, but you have the problem, you have those, um, uh, those edges that are not clean, so you have to post-process it. But um, as we heard earlier at the conference, uh, the shrink wrap modifier is not very popular. I love it uh, because you could model a face which should be animatable, just uh, use project with a shrink map modifier, and you should have um, something to, to be able to work with. Has somebody done something like this? Okay. How did it work? Oh, okay. Um, I repeat for, for the camera, um, if you take more than one shrink map modifier um, and combine them, then you should get, get good results. Was it right? Great. Thank you. No. And then I had a learning dive into Blender. I started Blender 2 with 2.49, which was pain in the ass. And fortunately, there was a book, uh, Das Blender Buch, from a German author, which helped me through, so I, I got okay with that, but uh, someday I stopped it. And um, now, now it's much better, since Blender 2.5. 2. Um, what I found was a so great software. It's unbelievably great. Thank you, John, and thank you, community. Um, many really good books. I found, I found thousands of videos, video tutorials. Some of them are excellent, some of them not that excellent. And uh, helpful community. But those are all very tiny mosaic pieces. And when you try to get a fast setup and get fast up and running, because you have a commercial interest in, for example, uh, earning your, your life with this, um, it was not fast enough. What I had hoped to find was all this, because this is really, really great, uh, but some kind of top-down graphical overview with, uh, of a best practice production pipeline blueprint um, that lets me drill down where I need it, not in weeks or months, but in minutes to say, okay, this is what I want to do, and this is a best practice approach how to do it. Because otherwise I have uh, uh, browsed through 10 tutorials and did maybe find a part of that what I was looking for. Now, um, I wondered what it would look like and I prepared something. I'm not sure if my, my drive already synced it. Uh, we will try to find it. But I would like to ask you, um, would you would you uh, think such a thing would be helpful to have an overview where you can drill down, you can say, okay, this is a pipeline for something, and for example, I have uh, 3D scanning, how can I do this with stereo scan photogrammetry with uh, um, some, some uh, what is it, infrared sensors like Kinect with uh, some other stuff, depth fields and that. Um, would this be interesting? Yes. Yeah? Um, have an idea how it should look like. You can, of course, make a diagram. For example, there's a great uh, tool called YAD, where you can model graphs and, and stack them, and, and they rearrange uh, themselves, and it's really great. 
so it can be abstract. Uh, would you think it would be more interesting to have it uh, like a village or a factory way of uh, departments and, and doing things? What do you think? Okay. If you, if you have an idea, uh, I think we, I, I would be glad to discuss this with you later. Um, let me do a leap of faith and have a look if my Google Drive already synced it. No. Which possibly could... Okay, we'll try this, and maybe it's there some minutes later. Meanwhile, I will continue. So, um, because of that, I joined the uh, Blender Foundation education mailing list, and you can find me there. I would be happy to discuss things like that with you. There. Now, what have I done so far? Um, I have this whole deck tech demo. A rough uh, storyboard, the artwork from Verity I mentioned, and we did some 3D modeling and I put it together in a small video. Which looks like, yeah, this is uh, original artwork from me. Um, I did it with my, my Android tablet, I bought it for that and I'm quite happy. Uh, and I said it gives a, a rough idea. There's some uh, city with floating skyscrapers and she gets a call. She takes a space bike, travels to the moon and there she has a romantic dance and then some more things happen um, which I will not mention here. But um, from this stage I said I need to take it further to, to make something impressive out of it and I gave it to my artist. and. So I gave her, for example, the 3D model of the, of the bike, and she did this for me. And this is the 3D model, and she, she made the texturing, so this is 2D, which I yesterday uh, ported to, to Blender. And this is what she made from my, you, you see the contrast of my drawing and what she did. And so I said, before I thought, oh, I'm not that bad. But, but you, you know, when it comes to that, you need a real artist who's able of doing things like this. And I said, wow, okay, that's really amazing. And yeah, then I did not have personally the time to do this before Blender conference. So I asked the guy who supported this to Unity uniworlds.de uh, to, um, to make a camera mapping of that and I just fixed some parts of it and included it into an animation and I had lots of fun building this floating tower. Um, I just put in a background and started working on that and putting all the textures and all the details in there and then now we can have a look at the rendered cloud flight I produced out of it until this morning. So there are some some flaws in it, um, but this is what was possible right now. When you have a look at the textures right now, you see they start moving. And I don't know why yet. And this is the 3D mapped scene. With the motorbike. This is a blender render. I had some trouble with the terminator problem, so I increased the subdivision surfaces. That's what I have so far. Okay, um, for the finish I have uh, some great resources I would like to share with you uh, because I did read a lot and a very good book is Blender Production uh, because it contains very important animation pipeline details, how, how, what to do to avoid uh, pitfalls that will cost you a lot when, when they appear late in the project. 
Um, you can buy, I think, from CG Masters the character creation DVDs, uh, Volume One to Three, um, in the in the lobby. And I had three books which I had fun and uh, uh, good good contents in it, which was uh, Build Your Own Rocket Bike, the Blender 2.5 Character Animation Cookbook, and very important old boy uh, book is the Art of Game Design from Jesse Schell. It's from 2008, but it covers really the basics and gives you a good idea because if you design for a whole deck environment or VR environment, it's it's some kind like a game. Um, I see it rather like a movie where you can freely watch and maybe roam around, uh, but you have some similar similar points and problems. So this is a very great resource. Summary. I would like to, because I have to build it anyway for my production pipeline, to do some kind of top-down best practice blueprint for character animation. If you're interested in me, feel free to join a discussion at the Blender Foundation education mailing list. Um, with this, I plan to help mankind qualify for the 22nd century and have some fun with the Three Futures Holodeck musical and think about waking the superhero in you too because he's in there and I can tell you this was the most satisfying thing I did in my life. Thank you very much. Now, when I, when I had a look at the starting time, I think we have three minutes left. Um, I have one question for you, and uh, I'm working uh, on, on the point with, uh, with Ellen. Um, how to create real-time 3D content directly with Blender, uh, which I would love to do, but actually I haven't seen any possibilities, so I went to Unity right now. Uh, Tom mentioned some possible WebGL viewer in the future. Maybe this was something. Any questions from you? Yeah. Um, I think we are out of service. David. I was just wondering, uh, who's writing the music, or do you have any samples of the music that'll be in the musical? Um, I have some guys in the games industry which produce premium game music and they said, okay, for the trailer we go with you and write the music, but uh, they asked not to be mentioned in, uh, in name right now. The others, um, this presentation will be freely available, the others, for example, the choreography, um, you can see the address there. So I take professions. I, I do a bit myself, but it's just playing around. And uh, if this has to, if this shall be a success, it has to be done professionally. Yeah. Thank you. Anybody else? No. Oh, one, one more. Sorry. Uh, was the. The VR animation I saw yeah. earlier, that was all motion capture, was it? That was a free capture which is available from the Carnegie Mellon University. They have a large database of, I think, five or 6,000 uh, motion captures, which somebody was so kind to port to BVH, mm -hmm. and I was importing this into Blender and just uh, trying with that. Thanks. But I also did some mocap experiments and was... Uh, um, not amazed by the fact that you have different output formats and you have to think about how do I produce, uh, how do I convert those different formats to my rig and, and all that stuff you probably know. Okay. Last question. Then we are finished on time. Thank you very much. If anybody wants to see this, um, I'll be around here and you can have a look.